had sexual relations with a centaur. Will Nomad have a new Blade and Sorcery update? Hey hey hey, welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and we're going to talk about Blade and Sorcery's new update and if Nomad will be getting one. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video and enjoy the show. I recently took the plunge into Blade and Sorcery after watching YouTubers like I Am Krusty drive themselves mad in this beautiful masterpiece. I can make a really good risotto if you don't kill me! So, I figured it was time to dive into this rabbit hole myself. If I had to describe Blade and Sorcery in simple terms, it's like a VR boxing ring, but with swords, axes, magic, and anything you can get your hands on. Developed by Warp Frog, this game lets you experience brutal physics-driven combat in a medieval fantasy world, where every spell hits your opponents and every swing of your weapon feels realistic. Well, except for those moments when the NPCs merge with you and glitch out. However, what really sets this game apart is the freedom it offers, the realism, the intensity of the combat. This is peak VR gaming. On PC VR, the game already has the Crystal Hunt update, but it also has even more improvements to the VR combat system. Better graphics, smoother animations, and more lifelike physics make the experience even more immersive. And with the modding potential, the creative possibilities are endless. In virtual reality, you can even run into dungeon outposts using your newfound abilities and powers to take down new enemies. Plus, the loot you find can be sold to the Baron for better weapons and armor. The Crystal Hunt progression mode in Blade and Sorcery allows players to explore the lore of its fantasy world through a structured narrative campaign. Unlike the typical sandbox experience, this mode integrates the game's physics-driven combat into beautifully crafted and detailed environments, providing a fresh and immersive experience. You begin with no spells, and to unlock new ones, you must defeat the boss Hector and collect crystal cores. These cores allow you to acquire more spells, which can also be imbued into your weapons and staves, enhancing their damage and versatility. With 71 skills available, and likely more to come, Crystal Hunt offers a deep sense of progression that's perfect for longtime fans of the game. While this update is a fantastic addition for PC VR players, it's disappointing that Nomad players will have to wait for these features to arrive. To be honest, when I first got Blade and Sorcery Nomad, I assumed it was the full version of the game that everyone else was playing. We did get an announcement about two months ago, confirming that the Crystal Hunt mode will be coming to Nomad sometime this year. It was initially estimated to launch within four months, but based on the current timeline, I predict we'll see the 1.0 update for Nomad by December. The delay is largely due to Warp Frog polishing the PC VR version as much as possible before porting it to Quest, but rest assured, the leveling system and Crystal Hunt mode are coming to the Quest version. Everything from combat to spells like the Twin flame spell, enemy AI, and more will be reworked in this update. One feature I hope they improve is the climbing, as it can feel pretty clunky at times. I'm hoping they refine this as part of the port to Quest 3. Aside from that, we can expect new adversaries like the Golem, fresh dungeons, better weapons, over 100 skill effects, 100 full armor sets with 90 pieces, loot, and deeper lore. I did have a minor issue in Nomad on Quest 3 when I couldn't open the treasure chests, but that might have been because I was in sandbox mode. I tried every possible method to open those treasure chests, but nothing worked. Simply opening them by hand wasn't the answer. Thankfully, by the end of this year, we should be able to finally grab that sweet, sweet loot. According to the Baron's announcement, Nomad's new update will perform much better on the Quest 3, especially given the larger environment. The Quest 2 version, however, will need some reworking in terms of VFX and graphics, as it can be a bit shaky right now. That said, Nomad is getting improved visuals including new ocean effects and a custom water solution that enhances the graphics without sacrificing performance. My hope is that this update brings Nomad closer to the quality of the PC version, closing the gap between the two platforms. And who knows, we might even see more mods available in the modder shop. While Blade and Sorcery Nomad doesn't quite match up to the PC VR version, that doesn't mean it's any less fun for Nomad players. If 
you're looking for a sandbox experience that offers full freedom and control, it's definitely worth playing on the quest. Personally, my favorite aspect of Nomad is the mods. Being able to directly access mods in-game allows you to fully customize your experience, whether it's by adding new weapons, maps, or gameplay features. Playing the base game on the quest can feel a bit vanilla to me, but mods change everything, so I, my friend, will be discussing and recommending every mod and feature that you should use. How will I do this? Well, I will add every mod I can get my hands on until this game breaks. With this lightsaber core mod, you'll have the opportunity to wield lightsabers from the iconic characters such as Darth Vader, Lord Korvax, Luke Skywalker, and Mace Windu. It's a fantastic addition to your collection as General Grievous would say. And if you pair this mod with the Ripper mod, you can truly unleash your inner Jedi or Sith, taking down your adversaries with style by severing an arm or leg in the process. <laughs> Let's move on to the next mod. In the Yamato mod, you'll wield Virgil's iconic Yamato and Mirage Edge from Devil May Cry. Experience a dynamic combat style as you unleash powerful abilities like Judgment Cut and Mirage Blades, showcasing Virgil's swift and deadly finesse. What are you gonna do? You can't hurt me, cause I am an NPC and not a real person. This voice mod is my personal favorite. It introduces unique voice lines for your opponents, created by Jack the Fallout. Oh, give me a slow death. <gasps> Although I don't watch his channel, I've never experienced such sheer enjoyment as I do now, sending NPCs to their maker like a true Dark Souls boss. <laughs> If you're a fan of Demon Slayer, you'll love this Tanjiro mod, which equips you with a sword that radiates flames. That's... that's it. Hollow. Purple. Take the Amplified and the Reversal, then create an imaginary mass. Imaginary technique. Hollow. Purple. Throughout heaven and earth, we alone are the chosen ones, as we have been gifted this technique in blade and sorcery. It's incredibly overpowered, but since we're not as strong as Gojo, you'll find your left hand spasming uncontrollably if you use this technique too frequently. If you're a fan of Jujutsu Kaisen, you'll want to check out this Toji Fushiguro skin mod. Now you can embody Toji while you raise everything except your son. Oh no. The mod section is even packed with a variety of spell mods, including an exciting Assassin's Creed Mirage mod. With this mod, you'll wield the iconic hidden blade and utilize Basim's arsenal of tools, such as daggers, poison smoke bombs, and much more. If you enjoy Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, you can integrate the parry effect into blade and sorcery, enhancing the combat experience and making it much more satisfying. There are also mods that introduce new maps, including ruins and even a McDonald's, along with upgrades for NPCs in Nomad. These mods boost NPCs' health, strength, and even their intelligence, allowing them to dodge your attacks. While the AI can surround your character, they often act more like ragdolls you can use as body shields. What do you think of Blade and Sorcery Nomad, or Blade and Sorcery in general? What do you like about playing it? Do you have any favorite mods? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to see more, and to let me know your thoughts. I always enjoy reading your input when it comes to different games discussed on the channel. Thank you for watching, and that's all.